Um, but what we're, where we're going to start off um, is with the traditional MIDI route, because there are still a lot of us guys out there the, that are using tr traditional MIDI interfaces um, and keyboards that have your MIDI in and your MIDI out plugs, some, of, some with MIDI through as well. Um, but these are connected by MIDI DIN and they're either going to be connected to Pro Tools by a MIDI interface which has, you know, the... Uh, uh, the, the MIDI ports on, or as a traditional audio interface that also has MIDI ports on. And these don't automatically show up in Pro Tools. They actually take a little bit of configuring to be able to get the signal in, whereas traditional USBs typically plug and play. Andy and Anders are going to talk about that a lot later on. Um, but I just want to talk, start off by just showing you guys how to set up uh, or MIDI properly in uh, Audio MIDI Studio um, so that we can get those signals into Pro Tools. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up a program called Audio MIDI Studio on the Mac. And this is where we can see all of our available MIDI ports. And as we can see here, we've got a Presonus Studio uh, 1810 audio interface, and we can see a MIDI Sport 2x2, two two, uh, which is a, a MIDI interface in its own right. The, the 1810 has got a single MIDI in and a single MIDI out, and we can tell that because these uh, it's represented by these two little arrows um, underneath the uh, uh, this little graphic here that shows us that we've got a port in and we've got a port out and on the 2x2 two two, we've got two ports we've got A and B and we've got an input for A an input for B and an output for A and an output for B so this means we can plug two devices into the MIDI sport but we can only plug one device I mean directly if we're not talking about MIDI through uh, we're talking about one device directly into the 1810 um, now to be able to do that uh, and actually have these represented in Pro Tools, we have to create ourselves a MIDI instrument. And we can see here that I've got this Yamaha S90, which is my main studio piano. And that is just simply created, and then the plugs plugged directly into my Studio 1810. Now this will allow uh, the, the Yamaha to show up specifically in Pro Tools. Uh, let's just flick over to Pro Tools and I'll show this, and then I'll show about uh, creating a, an instrument outright. So if we flick over here, we can see on our MIDI track right here that in the traditional I.O. ports where you typically see your inputs for your interface and your outputs for your interface, um, we can see the available MIDI ports. So just clicking the input shows us that we've got, first off, these are it says predefined, but these basically just all of the MIDI channels that we have available um, coming from the things that I haven't specifically connected an instrument to, i.e. the MIDI Spore. Um, but if we click on the Yamaha, it doesn't show up the, uh, the, the, the studio, uh, my Presonus I.O., um, because I've created this instrument that is basically overriding that. Um, and I've got that selected to transmit MIDI on channel four, and the piano is set up to transmit MIDI <coughs> data on channel four only. So we can click that. And then I've got this instrument rooted, or this MIDI track rather, rooted to expand, and that's just on expands MIDI node number one. Now when I press the keyboard, I can find it without looking, you can see that that's sending MIDI data into expand. Actually, if I hit record enable, because I think that's a majority of the, the way that majority of you guys are going to do it to start off with, you can see that there's a MIDI signal going in there, and that MIDI signal is being rooted straight over to expand. Now if we flick back over to MIDI Studio, um, let's create a new instrument. So I'm going to wire in a Korg M1, which is the other studio that I, uh, the other keyboard that I have here. I'm going to click the little plus icon and I'm going to name that Korg uh, M1 and set the manufacturer as Korg. The model is M1. We can leave all of the rest of this stuff for now. And I'm a little bit funny about this kind of thing. So I'll add a picture of a Korg M1 in there. You should see my iTunes library. It's incredibly tight. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing. So we're going to plug this Korg M1. The, the, uh, the output of the Korg M1 is going to be plugged into the input of input uh, port A. 
on the MIDI sport. We don't need to do the other way around unless I want to send MIDI signals back to the Korg M1. Um, and then I, I can route the inputs of this, uh, the output, sorry, of the, of the M1 into Pro Tools for recording that specific device. I just don't need to right now. I just want to have that controlling my VSTs in Pro Tools. And I think that's how a majority of us are going to be doing it anyway. That's, I've got David, a really itchy nose Let me jump today. in just real quick. Of course. Is this may be, and I don't mean to be condescending to anybody who might be watching this, this may be the place where people fall into, into problems, especially younger people, mm -hmm. because when you're dragging the output of a MIDI interface into the input of a keyboard, you're not actually making a connection. You're telling the system yeah. the physical connection you've already made. Mm -hmm. So what, what Dave has done prior to setting it up in the software is he took the cable from the back of the MIDI out of, what was it, port A of, of your of your MIDI sport? So, yeah. And then that's going in. So he's made that connection already. What he's doing at this point is he's telling the system what connection he's already made. Yeah, and if so you I'm, don't uh, set that up correctly, mm -hmm. then, then there's your problem right there. Yeah, I'm not using a USB cable. This is a traditional MIDI DIN plug. Five pin DIN, yep. Yeah, uh, the, the, and connected to the, the output, the MIDI out on the S90 and the MIDI, or the, or the, the M1 in this case, uh, and then the input of the MIDI Sport. So it's physical cable, it's not USB. Right. Um, Okay, so with those connected, and it's it's kind of like the buses in the I/O tab, isn't it? It's just making kind of software connections, um, so that the tags show up correctly in the software, and the software knows where to send the signal to and to send or, and to get the signal from. So if we go back over to Pro Tools now and we click on the I/O tab here, we can now see that the M1 is represented, and I have my M1 set up on channel one. So if I select that and the keyboard was here and I could press keys on the keyboard. The This track will now be looking for signals coming from the M1 plugged into port A of the MIDI sport um, and it'll be looking specifically on channel one. If you're not sure about your channels or, or you haven't done any channel setting up whatsoever, you can select all channels and the, the MIDI track can look for MIDI signals coming in from all 16 channels coming from that specific port. Or if you want to go even more basic than that, you can select all, and this track will be looking at signals or looking for signals coming from all three of my MIDI uh, ports, from B and A on the MIDI sport, and from the MIDI input coming from the Aya, uh, my Personas interface. Yeah, that's, so, that's an important point, and I think that um, we, this is something that it really comes down to what you're doing right so i have no friends so i'm always <laughs> by myself for obvious reasons clearly um but i i'm if i'm working by myself do i have to set a specific port and midi channel for my controller no i don't i could just set it to all and then whatever thing i'm playing it will send that yeah. MIDI data onto that track um, and, and kind of ignore all the MIDI channels, which basically mm -hmm. Pro Tools tends to ignore MIDI channel mm -hmm. input anyways because of the way that Pro Tools treats MIDI. Um, it does, uh, you know, it does uh, recognize MIDI channels on output, but on input, it's kind of agnostic, right? Now, the other way you could work it, let's say that David and Anders came over to my house and I've got different controllers and everybody's playing a different instrument together onto three different tracks. Well, mm -hmm. at that point, that's when Dave wants to go, okay, so, you know, Andy's instrument is is attached to this keyboard, attached to this port, and then maybe even on this channel, right? And mm -hmm. then Anders is a different one. And at that point, the individual tracks will only be recognizing and will only be hearing the data that corresponds to that port and or MIDI channel. So a lot of folks, a lot of folks that work by themselves in project studios, just leave their MIDI inputs on all all the Set time all. And, and yeah and, that, and, the, and there's one more use of, of leaving it at all uh, as well because i have a digital piano over here and that one doesn't have any controllers doesn't have a pitch bend doesn't have an expression so mm -hmm. i'll use a second keyboard and just use the expression on on that keyboard while playing on the digital piano uh, so I, I i tend to leave them at all all the time 
Yeah, so the so the note data will be coming in from one keyboard on one channel, and the expression data and all the controller data will be coming in to the same track, but from a different channel. Right. And that one track is capturing everything all at the same time. Because it's and listening then, to all. Because it's listening yeah. to all. And then yeah. on the output, that output you set you know a specific destination and channel, right? Mm -hmm. And at that point, it takes all the data wherever it's come from, yeah. all the data that's on that track just goes gets spit out that, that one single channel of output yeah exactly and uh, we can route that data to a specific instrument and, and Pro Tools will see the the MIDI output port will see every instrument that you have available on uh, act actually in the session um, and you can select where you specifically want to route those to or you can route it back out to the keyboard to have the keyboard play the sounds and then record those back in through as through a physical input um, so it, it's yeah, incredibly versatile. 